किसी भी बैक्टीरिया क्रिएट्स अ फोर्टेस अराउंड इट एक्चुअली विच इज ऑफ विच इज कंसिस्ट ऑफ मेम्रेन इट आर ऑफ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स मॉलिक्यूल्स ट्राई टू फिगर इट आउट हाउ टू एक्चुअली हाउ दिस फोर्ट्रेस इज मेड वंस यू हैव नो अंडरस्टैंड हाउ दिस इज मेड वी कैन देन मेक न्यू ड्रग्स दैट विल टारगेट दैम एंड दैट्स वॉट वी आर डूइंग राइट नाउ एक्ट इन फ्यूचर टू गो सो दैट्स वन ऑफ द एरिया ऑफ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ टिबुकुलस इज बायोलॉजी साइंस इज एन अनडिंग एक्सप्लोरेटरी एरिया सो यू कंटिन्यू टू इवॉल्व इन टू न्यू पैराडाइम्स एंड न्यू एरियाज ऑफ वर्ल्ड Welcome to Eureka. You are watching Eureka, a program dedicated to scientists, their contribution, their life, their education, and their aspirations and dreams, and how they contributed to nation building, and also to the entire pool of scientific knowledge. Today we have one of the most fascinating personalities with us, Dr. Rajesh Gokhale, who is heading one of the most fascinating institute called IGIP a part of council of scientific and industrial research for generally people would you like to explain what does this IGIP mean which is institute of genomics and integrated biology each one of the um, words is difficult but science is difficult would you like to make it easy for our viewers sure let me try and uh, i think uh, as the human genome sequences started to be deciphered and as you know in around 2000 when this was announced what is clear is that you have uh, now alphabets with you of what human human consist of but these alphabets has to be converted or into any life form of any life form and not only human but other life forms also is available right and so what happens is that to convert these alphabets into sentences and to convert and so that these sentences make sense or words and sentences is what one needs to understand and that's the real role of this institute is playing is that we now have this all the information available let me try to understand there is something called genome helix mm -hmm. each bit of this big ladder has is designated with alphabet Correct. alphabet combine with each other like sentences mm -hmm. and words are formed so you make and words then and you make sentences correct. and then you make sentences and these are scientific sentences which have information which can be read by the the scientists correct. right please go ahead and so these so, so these words and sentences that one are able to so basically there are 3 into 10 power 9 billion such alphabets huge number huge number it's a very large number and therefore very much so the language also would be very complex correct so it's a complex language and so the words and sentences combines to make different meaning and that's why we all are different we all are human beings for if you take human genome right. but we are still different actually and that's what is amazing about us so what is interesting now is that can we start understanding either your disease purposes or from a purpose of you know how you were born or why were you, you know what what is the kind of level of intelligence you have can we understand this information from these various alphabets that are available is really the task that we are actually involved into and therefore to bring in and do these things what you need to do is you need to combine other knowledge of science as well to be able to understand this informations and really this is decoded in forms of proteins forms of rna in forms of various metabolites that are there in our body which then can can you know makes a human being these are the building blocks that we are talking about correct. the building blocks of our body and any uh, life form correct, exactly. that we are talking about correct. so that is genomics correct. so that's how what genomics is this, this is integrated is about so as i why, said you know you need you? to because you need to if you if if you need to now understand this you obviously cannot just start from a zero i mean so you utilize the knowledge that other scientific disciplines for example in chemistry or in biology that are you know more classical subjects where you understand much of the how can you use this information to elucidate the concept of genomics so understanding the genome of primarily we are involved in human genome at our place but also of microbes for example mycobacterium tuberculosis that cause tb right. so how do you understand them and is what the integration is all about act so at one level your institute is highly specialized mm -hmm. looking at a very focused thing called genomics mm -hmm. and at another level you are breaking the boundaries that 
encircle this particular discipline and entering into other discipline and integrating them Correct. with genomics yep. to understand how life forms react, how we are born, what are we composed of, etc., etc. And why some of the people, you know, have diseases and others don't have and how can one, you know, make use of these things actually as in future as we go in terms of... But enough. is it not God's will that some people will have uh, diseases? Uh, so, you could, so there are certain diseases that you are born with. And those are, you know, born dis in born disorders actually, and that also we try. But to generally, understand. the myths about this. But many you acquire right. by your own. Um, sometimes you call misdeeds of uh, of what gets imprinted, and however you know appear. For example, diabetes is a wonderful example of that kind. I mean, we, we, we there's very strong data to start to believe that it starts at an early childhood, mm -hmm. but it eventually emerges at your at your later stage of life actually just because the way you have adapted your body to be able to you know not you know not provide enough not do enough exercises eat all the kind of mm -hmm. high calorific foods actually so this is what really what is so so something is embedded but something is acquired and can we understand both of them such that at least many of these problems can be tackled but human beings mm -hmm. have got many myths and our understanding of life was that a living being as a living being when you have a spirit or atma or ru and when this goes out you are dead yeah. right that is part one of the uh, understanding general understanding i am talking about the other part of the whole thing is that the diseases the way you are born the way you look the way your eyes are, the way your hair is, all these things are given by nature and God. Mm -hmm. Now, what you are saying is that your institute is involved in asking the question, is it nature or some supernatural being or is it embedded and encoded in our genes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can we manipulate these genes? Now, there are lots of fascinating questions. Mm -hmm related to genomic research. Mm -hmm. One of the fundamental question is, can we create life? Mm -hmm. What is your reaction to that? Well, interesting. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, from a perspective that we look at as a scientist, I mean, clearly, we totally believe in, in advancing science and advancing technologies. And we should be able to do it. Right. I mean, there is really no reason why we cannot actually. You know, we, one we can always argue about you are the best aircraft, but do we want faster aircraft? Nobody will say no to it. So, that's, so, as a scientist who is practicing the art of learning and understanding biology, why would I say we should not create life? We should create life. I mean, we are already doing it in some form when, you know, for example… In a very primitive form, yes, we yes, have already done it. We are already doing it. it and therefore, we are going to continue to extend the technological barriers and uh, break these barriers and reach new heights, which is of creating life. Of course, will you How be able far? to do it well? How will you be able to do it? And philosophically, whether it is correct, these are all very different matters, you know. Right. How far are we from creating life and new life forms? As a scientist, what is your Yeah, so, so the way I look at it actually is that very small microorganisms or, you know, very simple life species have already been, people have already started to learn to put it together. It's a very, very simple ones, the most primitive ones you so can see. So, gone are the days when you, you could say that this is the domain of God and this is the domain of human beings. No, the line is blurred. Yeah. We have been able to create simple life forms. So, so I think this, this God issue, I would not even like right. to connect, you know, primarily because I will tell you, you know, as you rightly put, you know, Atma and this. So, philosophy is a very important integral part of life. I mean, values... I don't know it's it's encoded in genes it comes from you know you can always say my parents gave me the genomes but they gave the values and the values determine your genome I mean I, it, I can give you a simple example and that's why we need to you know if I can just give this example you know if I'm if I have a certain pigment color and I'm taking this just because it's easy for everybody to observe right. if you live in a north India or if you live in a south India your own color will be different correct correct of course it's encoded by your genome right but the environment is changing the color. If you stay in the southmost part of the country, you look darker just because sun tans you more. Right. If you live in Kashmir, you look fairer actually. So clearly, genome has an information, environment around has an ability to adapt. 
and primarily combination of these two is what life is all about. And that's a very complex, I mean, it's not so trivial, but that's what we are interested in looking at. And therefore, you know, giving new life is also that. I mean, we may be able to put a pieces of these alphabets together, but will it appear as may emerge as a life that, that we are known for? I, I am not so sure at this stage. Let me ask you another question that uh, the human consciousness has passed through various phases. Mm -hmm. One of the phases was when we were racist and predominantly racist and second world war became the basis for that. Can you say with confidence and science says confidently today that, uh, that we, we belong to same uh, gene pool. We are uh, human beings yeah. and uh, we are not different because you are born in a different caste or you are born in a different society or you are born in a different culture. Yeah. We are same and we have born out of maybe same gene pool. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's an undisputed phenomena. We all know that, you know, it's the same gene pools. The difference between you and me may be about one billion alphabets, which is between any other caste or any other, you know, whatever you could talk about, whatever system we had. So clearly that's, that's you know, completely so solved the social problem. theory is based on casteism. Social theory is based on racism. Social theory is based on basically people living in different parts of the world. These are creations. These I mean, are I would, creations. these are creations has got so, nothing to do with the gene pool. I mean, of course, what, what typically happens is that as, I, as I've been talking to you, if you put them in a the right environment, you can adapt and you can evolve anybody. So, so I, I mean, that's, that's genomics is clearly undoubtedly shown that in general, any two human beings differ by, by one million alphabets. And that's enough to make us different. Which is what percentage of uh, the total? So, as I said, it's three billion. So, one million will be, you know, one six. So, it's about one person, small percent of it actually. Less than one person. Yeah, less than one person. Much less two percent than. of it. So, we are same exactly. much more than Absolutely. we are different from each other. Yeah. Uh, let me come back to uh, the institute once again. The study of genome or genomics is a highly uh, technologically driven uh, study. Now, do we have cap capability within the country to acquire and master that technology which will lead us to uh, scientific investigations? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we do. I mean, I think we probably could not be a part of the genome sequence when in 2000 at that time, but right now, I genome mean, project, the, genome project that happened, yeah. human genome project that happened, I mean, which was with collaboration between large several countries and maybe at that time it we were was not the largest product uh, project open that source humanity project. had ever taken Absolutely. at that time at that time across nations and uh, and you know almost we, every country participated yeah, almost all technologically developed countries participates i would say so you know we were probably a little bit late but you know it's it's the same example that you can take for space exploration right i mean we probably started late but we now have made forays into it and that's exactly what i would say is that we are now almost on a competitive par level with any of the world countries that we are actually. On that note, let me take a break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll continue the discussion. Welcome back to Eureka. We are talking to Dr. Rajesh Gokhale. Cutting edge technology, cutting edge science that is being done within a lab of CSIR. Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. The lab is generally known as IGIP and we are very fortunate today to have you here. You and your team during this period has contributed significantly not only to Indian science but also to the international pool of uh, scientific investigation in the area of genomics. Would you like to comment on that? Yes, I mean, significant amount of work was done by my predecessors as well, because as I say, you know, science is a collaborative endeavor. And uh, previous director who was... Professor Today, Dr. science cannot be done by one person sitting in a small room with all kinds of gadgets around him. And uh, scientists in earlier days were thought of as something like uh, out of the world kind of person with big, big beard and... <laughs> spread out here, etc., etc., that is no more possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
a team effort. Yeah, it's a, yes, it's please. It's a large us. team effort, and that's why you know there's several of us have you know contributed in various different and ways. And with international collaborations. With, with, with international collaborations, and one of the wonderful example, which was actually a project done uh, by my previous uh, director who was there actually, and which has set us to do things, is like you know how can we divide Indian populations into different small subpopulations? Because what typically happens is that although our gene pools are different to make discovery you still need to find common gene pools so that you can find differences for example you know we know several examples where certain community actually is more predisposed to certain disease yeah. what is the reason for that for example if you take you know uh, people on al along the coconut region of that part i mean they know that there is they have more predisposition for cardiovascular diseases there are some families known for example, if you cannot give them the same level of anesthesia as you give to others if you want to do surgery, what is the reason for that? So clearly, you need to identify such populations actually and then be able to identify the genes in that population that is actually predisposition for it such that you now can start making discoveries and understanding, okay, this gene, this gene and this gene together codes for all such problems actually. And so what was done is that in India, we kind of total throughout the country, we kind of divided the Indian population into about 56 different types. Okay. And we use this now 56 different types of population actually to, uh, to do the analysis of our work. Just hold on, uh, uh, let me understand. These 56 gene pools that you can identify in Indian population, they are spread contiguously into various geographical areas or they are spread across the country? So basically, this was done across the country, but there are some regions. No, I am talking about the distribution of this, distribution of these pools, pools. Yeah, they are mixed. They are they're not mixed. completely, you know, at one single place. They are mixed actually. Okay. Uh, but but clearly, some of them. So you can't make a comment that South Indian population of India is different from South uh, North Indian population of India or East uh, India population is different from. You cannot North. put it in as a single in a single piece of note. Actually, there are some differences. All of us are All of mixed. Us are as far as geography is concerned. But we do have differences in the gene pool. Correct. Right. And these and these then allows us to actually look at these changes actually. And that's where we did actually. And then what eventually was done is then as part of a total Asia collaboration work actually. So we collaborated with China, Japan and all these other countries, Hong Kong, Singapore. So how is that population now different in comparison do to other our, Asian countries? Yeah. Do we have our gene brothers elsewhere? Correct. So, this is beautiful because the data that have emerged in, in India actually yeah. is emerged and this was a paper that was published actually, you know, I think 3-4 years back in science actually which emerged that Indian in, in India, the population actually spans all the Asian population. So, there are some that are more close to this part of the Asian country, some this is close to more this part of the Asian country, some this is where. So, therefore, India is a melting pot what we call for all in all populations and that way India is a beautiful cultural mix of all these gene pools that we have been discussing about and therefore it's a wonderful country i mean where you have probably everything you can so it look completely for. debunks the myth that somebody has good blood and somebody has bad blood you are lower caste i am upper caste i have a better lineage yeah. than yours it's all our assumptions it's i would call it our assumptions and nothing beyond that science actually. has completely debunked that Absolutely. structuring of society yeah. Yeah. itself and this is beautiful because for our country that means that if anything we want if we can make discovery in our different gene pools it probably will be applicable to the rest of the world as well and therefore this is a wonderful uh, you know an opportunity for indians to study our genomics in detail actually it's completely fascinating and I'm sure it's fascinating for our viewers as well. I need to take a break at this juncture, but don't go back. We are going to discuss further with Dr. Gosam. Welcome back to Eureka. We have with us Dr. Rajesh S. Kokle, Director of IGIB, which is a premier institute of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Dr. Gokhale, Last question, what set you on the path of these investigations, scientific investigation, which have been very significant for the country and humanity both? I think as a scientist first, I mean you, you enjoy 
imagining and doing things that we do not know. I mean, clearly the desire for being a scientist is, is quest, quest for understanding things that we do not know. The second is clearly the opportunity what we have presently. I mean, you also have to look at what I call ecosystem around you of what India can contribute, what I as an individual can contribute and what people aspire. And combination of this is what allows you to really, you know, plan out how, how to work and how to do research activity. So it's really an interesting mix of how, you know, how we can... How much your uh, family, your school, your college contributed to shaping up your uh, desire for doing science and asking difficult questions? These are very difficult questions. Yeah, I think it's, it's very much into the family. I mean, very much. I, 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 I think, you know, some of, several people ask me, you know, what is that you think is one turning point in your life? And I really think the sports was, playing sports was one of the most important aspect of, for my playing research. Playing sports? Yeah. And cooking food, and the, and which cooking. you do at home. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. And the reason for that is that sports is one place where you always get defeated. Right? You cannot go on winning every day. In research also, you cannot win every day. So you have to have that passion to lose and yet come up back and again play the next game again to win. And I think this is what good research is all about. You need to pursue, pursue till you reach the highest level of what you want to attain actually. And that's probably been, of course, with mentors and others clearly guide you how to go ahead and do it actually. It was lovely talking to you, very inspiring. We would like to continue the discussion, but we, are, we have run out of time. We will be with you next week with another fascinating personality, a hero that has contributed to the science and technology.